YouTube. What's good, y'all? I'm Marshall Fox and I'm a graphic designer based in Maryland. And if you're new here, I am too. So over the past year or so, I've gotten a ton of questions about my office, specifically about my lighting, my background, and really my whole recording setup in general. So in this video, I'm gonna show you around and give you a closer look. Look, I've got a lot going on in here, so I'm gonna try to stick to what I get asked about the most, what I think will be most helpful, and a few other little tidbits you may find interesting. So I've chopped it up into these chapters, and I'll try to be as informative as possible and drop links to everything in the description. But if it's something that I missed that you wanna know about, just drop a comment. Look, I'm serious, y'all. It's a lot. So go ahead and pause the video, grab your popcorn, pen, and pad. All right, y'all, let's get into it. So my office is a 10 by 13 foot space tucked in the corner of my basement. There are no doors or anything, so my kids could literally be jumping on a trampoline about 15 feet away from me. So I had an overall vision for it initially, like I knew I wanted the canvases and the two bookshelves and then an accent wall, but this is something that's really kind of grown and evolved with me over the past couple of years. It wasn't until last year when I started live streaming that I really got intentional about the overall vibe I was trying to create. So if I had to pick an overall theme for the home office, I would say it's like retro modern. You know, it's warm, it's cozy, it's lived in, right? Like We get busy in our home offices. So I wanted to create a space that not only spoke to my personality, but also to help me stay productive and focused while also being sectional. If you saw my last video, you know what I mean. So I use Philips Hue lights for all the color lights that you've seen here. I have three light strips, one behind the dad hat bar, one in that corner hanging off the bookshelf, which gives a nice glow off of the accent wall, and then one behind my desk. And I have two color ambience light bulbs to kind of balance things out. I have two plays back here, one stuck to this monitor, and one just chilling back here. For everything to work together, you have to have this huge smart bridge plugged into your router. It doesn't matter where it is in your house, but when you open up your app to control the lights, the app talks to the bridge, and the bridge talks to the lights. So in the app, you can change the colors, and you can even have different colors for different bulbs and lights, but I like to keep it simple. I'm a fan of the orange and teal look on video, so this is where I live. Something I really like about it is that you can control it with Alexa. Turn off all lights. So I have all my lights in here connected via. And I also have a motion sensor that turns the lights on when I walk into the area. So the only time I really change the color of these lights is when I'm using this focus app called Portal. And when you swipe through the different scenes, they have different color schemes. For the other ambient lighting, there are these three GE vintage amber spiral light bulbs that I got from Target. And I actually put an orange lighting gel sheet around it to make it more orange than amber. This tall lamp's from Amazon and so is the smaller one that's on my desk. The silver one is from Target and I just took the shade off of it. I'm sure you've seen this style lamp everywhere, but the bulb is just another Amber Edison bulb. It's just more regular size. But most of the time I have my video lights mounted from the ceiling so this shade is off of it and the light is out. I'll show you that later on in the video. So when I'm not filming and I don't have any Zoom calls scheduled for the day, I have a group set up in the Alexa app to turn all these lights off behind me but keep the lights on that are around my desk. <laughs> Y'all know we were taught not to go running up the light bill. So I get a lot of questions about this flickering light that I have over here. It's actually a flickering LED lantern that I got off Amazon. And I put it in this candle holder and put a piece of tissue paper around it to mask its fakeness. <laughs> So you know you can't have enough shelving. So I got all of these in here from Target. I have random stuff on the shelves that I mostly want to keep out of reach of the little foxes. Here I've got some logos that I've designed that I've been meaning to update for about three years. So I created this YouTube placeholder plaque here for motivation. Hey, help your boy out and subscribe. At the time of this video, I'm about 99,282 subs away from my goal. <laughs> So this is the logo from my company, 120 Design Studio. I got this particular sign from Tinkering Monkey back in 2018, but you can get something like this from Etsy. So throughout the office, I have these maroon acoustic phone panels that I got from the phone factory. So people are always surprised when I tell them where I got these four custom 120 canvases from on this back wall. Walmart, I know, right? They're actually really good quality and you can get them in a four pack. So this canvas I designed and I got via Printful. It's a reminder to myself and the other designers I mentor. When I first got into this graphic design space, I didn't see what success could look like for me. So I've made it my mission to share the tips, tools, and strategies I've been able to apply to my business with other freelance designers who want to do this thing full time and not as a side hustle. I feel that it's my duty, obligation, and responsibility, so that's why I'm here. So this is another canvas I designed a few years ago, and it's actually one of two. It's my favorite quote from a guy I rock with named Eric Thomas who goes by E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. So he's a world-renowned motivational speaker and pastor who I've had the privilege to connect and partner with over the past few years. So this canvas means a lot because as a husband and father of four, this is a constant reminder and helps me to push through the challenges of being an entrepreneur provider. So people have been asking me about this canvas for a couple years, but I just couldn't show it at this scale without making it available. So I got the official green light from E and CJ to offer it exclusively 
at this link. Look, I know that was a lot about a canvas, but there probably wouldn't be no office to tour without ET, so I couldn't just skip over that. All right, y'all, so my sound setup is kind of OD in here. I have a family of home pods. I got the mom and daddy at my desk, and I got the kids in the back that completely surround me with sound. The kids, they from mama's first marriage, and I actually paired them all with the subwoofer using the Apple Airport Express. So I'm able to plug in this subwoofer into the airport, and it allows it to be used as an airplane speaker. And the first time I heard it all together, y'all, I almost cried. So these two leaning bookshelves are from Wayfair. So on this side, I have this 120 hat I designed for ET Grind Gear line. And then one of my favorite design projects to date is book cover for Jamal King, AKA the nine to five millionaire. Look, I've been working closely with Jamal for the past few years and I've done his branding, all his gear, his website, but this by far is the crowning achievement. But what I'm most excited about is the impact that this book is having and will continue to have for years and years. Got some books here. Nah, they ain't organized, but I know where everyone is. A hey, shout out to my guy, Doc Rock, who sent me this customized sign with my personal logo on it all the way from the beautiful state of Hawaii. He just retired from the game, y'all, so I don't have a link for you to purchase one of these, but I'll link his channel in the description. I'm a Ravens fan, so I created this Lamar Jackson version of Grogu, commonly and formerly known as Baby Yoda. So when it comes to the business of graphic design, these five books are required reading in my opinion. I could do a whole video about each book to be honest. So I got my green juice and I took out these bottom couple of shelves to put this mini fridge here for my beverages. And I like it, but like my kids, it's mostly quiet until I get on Zoom. So I actually have a light strip extension running into the fridge so it doesn't just look like a black box. I'm trying to keep it sectional back here, you know what I'm saying? So on this side, I got the Amazon Echo Studio, which I used heavy before I got the home pods, but now we just use it outside when we chilling and grilling. So I got some more books. Most of these I got when I was in my mid twenties, when I was in sales, where I was obsessed with sales and self-help books. <laughs> On this shelf is mostly books with covers that I designed, with Lewis shoved in there to keep the phone from moving around. A shout out to my bro, Elysio Way for sending me this as a gift. It's super dope and you can change the colors. I've since paid it forward and ordered some for my people. They only like 60 bucks. I'll drop the link in the description. Down here, I got this ball ottoman thingy from Amazon for meditation, but I mostly use it as a footrest when I'm reading a book. And this is an Uma Mini Bluetooth sound lantern that Hayworth sent over after they saw the firm review. And these are the books that I'm actively reading or they on deck. And I keep them on this little table, also from Amazon, as visual cues. All right, y'all, it's time. We finna get to the goods. Look, this could be a whole video on its own, but ain't nobody got time to be waiting another two months for a desk setup, so let's go. All right, so the center of everything is this 27 inch 2020 iMac, the 10 core i9 with 64 gigabytes of RAM. For my secondary monitor, it's a 27 inch LG QHD monitor. It handles everything I can throw at it, it never chokes, and I throw everything at it. I use pretty much the entire Adobe suite. I use the Affinity Suite, Topaz Labs, Luminar, I use Final Cut Pro for video, I live stream, it's a beast, okay? But don't get this, don't get any Intel Mac right now. So a question I get a lot when I'm live streaming on interviews or Zoom calls is, yo, how do you get your video like that? Like, what camera are you using? What software are you use? It's Ecamm, baby. Shout out to my Ecamm fam. So for my camera, I use a Canon M50 Mark II with the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. So I have the kit lens as well, but the Sigma allows me to get more of this blurry background. So it's connected via HDMI and an Elgato cam link, but you can also connect it via USB and the quality is comparable. So Ecamm allows me to use this camera instead of the built-in webcam for Zoom and live streams. So if you wanna check them out, I have an affiliate link in the description. It is Mac only, so keep that in mind. So under the iMac, I have this trackpad for when I edit videos to zoom in and out of the timeline. I have this dial for this BenQ screen bar, which I have on my second monitor, since it obstructs the view of the camera when I have it on my iMac. This still gets the job done, which is to keep my work area lit. So I've got this Ugmunk analog to-do list, which is dope. I'm a pen and paper type of dude, so no matter what to-do list app I download, I always revert back to pen and paper. But this is a way I can keep my daily tasks front and center. So when I'm done with the day, I just file it away. They have next cards for tasks that are on deck, and some day tasks for stuff you'll get to when you get to. So they have these boxes you can shade based on the status of your task, but I just cross out stuff I did and highlight the stuff I'm finna do. Yeah, it's a piece of wood and some cards, but it's probably my favorite productivity tool. 10 out of 10 on my Nope Dope scale. So on the other side, I've got this Anchor Power Extend Desktop Surge Protector, and this is another rare 10 out of 10 on my scale. This thing is mad convenient and has quick charging. I have a wireless charging dock for my phone, watch, and AirPods, but I'll still resort to the good old plug-in way because it's so much faster. 
Plus, there are three outlets on the back. So if I'm working upstairs on my laptop, I'll bring this up sometimes to get a bit of an extension for my power cord, but to also plug my phone and iPad into. So I got some hard drives for long-term storage, family photos, and video editing. This is my baby right here, y'all. My 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. This thing is a tank, but it's got me through. It's finally starting to show its age, but I still prefer working on this as opposed to the iMac most of the time. More on that later. So the stand that it's in is an old motion universal stand that you can adjust based on how thick your laptop is so here are the airpods max and i have some protective coverings on the ear cups and the headband i usually keep them in this bra thingy because you can't turn them off and they usually just stay on this headphone stand because they're overrated airpods pro love them so under this riser i've got my goals journal and the kindle oasis which i mostly use for my daily devotionals and meditation readings so for my keyboard, I use the Logitech MX keys and the MX Master 3 mouse. So this is a no Dell or nodal desk pad, which is really just a big mouse pad. It's high quality, but it does lift up at the edge a little bit. It doesn't interfere with my work and it was only like 15 bucks. So I ain't complaining. So I use this simple kitchen timer during focus work sessions. I time everything I do using toggle, but I use this to help me manage my time blocks and keep me consciously aware that time is always ticking. Plus when it goes off, it's mad annoying. So it's always a race against the clock. So I use the stream deck when I'm live streaming, I can change scenes, cameras, and add animations when I'm using Ecamm. Yo, I forgot to mention the Parrot Padcaster teleprompter. So all my videos are heavily scripted. I'm not nice like that off the cuff. So I use the Padcaster with my phone up there and it reflects the words off of the screen. And I use the Prompt Smart app to scroll up and down wirelessly from my iPad. And you can also just touch the screen and scroll down as you need to. So this is a Vivo adjustable mic stand, but I also use it as a headphone holder for my Sony 1000 XM4s. And I use those for music most of the time. And I also use them plugged into the iMac when I'm editing video. So the mic is a Shure SM7B, which I had running into the DBX286 processor to increase the gain, enhance my voice and cut out the background sounds of my kids and that mini fridge. So the DBX is connected to this red Scarlett 2i2 audio interface, which converts the signal or something and delivers it to the computer via USB, something like that. So to light my videos, I use these three lights, which I've mounted to the ceiling with a combination of these ceiling mounts and this Matthews telescopic baby stand extension pole. So this main light is a Godox SL60Y with a 24 by 24 inch softbox and grid. So on the other side, I have a newer 480 by color LED light with a softbox. For my catch light, when I do use it, it's an ESDDI video light. It's not on right now, but I did use it at the beginning of the video. So these front two lights pretty much stay mounted all the time, but I can take them down whenever I don't feel like looking at them. Last but not least, we have the Hayworth Fern ergonomic office chair. There's no secret, I absolutely love the Fern. I did a review on it, I did a shirt for it, and there's a card up there if you haven't seen a review and you wanna check it out. <sighs> That's everything, y'all. All right, y'all, look, I know this was cute and all, but hear me out. A lot of these types of videos on YouTube are like, hey, look at me, look what I got. But I gotta leave you with this. One, this has been a work in progress for about three years. Two, none of this stuff will make you any happier. Look, I appreciate all this and I enjoy it. I still prefer to be on the couch in my do-rag and my six-year-old laptop that sounds like a Boeing 747. And I am most of the time. So don't chase the perfect setup because it'll never end. Ain't none of this that important. That's all I'm saying. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all of y'all. All right, y'all. I'm out. Peace.